on YouTube and Vidme. This is Green Valor. Just doing this video. It's a, an informational video on minimum wage and how increasing the minimum wage won't make the change you're looking for. And this is going to be. I'm going to try and explain this in a way that people will understand. So. The minimum wage at in Canada right now is about was it like 11.50? Uh, it's going to go up to 14 come uh, come January. I was told, and then 15 the next year. So we're looking at a yeah, two dollars and fifty cents increase in the minimum wage. Um, you have to understand that the minimum wage is a starting wage. You are not meant to live off of minimum wage. It was never designed that way. It's just a bare minimum so that people don't get fucked over by, you know, getting paid for peanuts for a job. That's what minimum wage is there for. It's the bare minimum. So raising it, raising the, the barrier of entry to higher doesn't actually change anything. It just means the next guy is coming in. That's going to be their starting wage. And the economy just has to catch up to that. It's, it, it, it baffles me. People that, that don't understand, this doesn't, the people should not be living off minimum wage. You should be making more. You should aspire for more. And what we actually need is better paying jobs, not higher minimum wage. It's a band-aid solution because the economy is forced to catch up to that, which means an inflation in pricing. And before people go, well, that's ju that just means that the you know, worst case scenario, uh, you know, everything just goes back to where it used to be. No, no, no. That's the best case scenario. Worst case scenario is almost every time this happens, we go into a fucking recession. Because that change where a company has to go from paying their employees one salary to another and the price adjustments they make in, in all their business causes a huge recession. A recession in spending, a recession in just penny pitching in general. You cannot have that. Companies have to make major adjustments to the pricing and, and, and everything and, and wages and they may have to even fire people or cut or put more work on other employees just to make enough money again. Because you have to understand in small business, we'll talk about franchises, right? The corporation your franchise owes itself to doesn't give a fuck about whatever the minimum wage is. They expect their cut regardless. So that only hurts them, the franchise owners, which who are the small business owners, by the way. So we're talking your Tim Hortons, your McDonald's, your Burger King. The people that own those, the small business owners, get fucked by this and not the corporations. You never fuck the corporations by this because they always get their cut and you, you have a contract. If you don't meet that contract, they can start dictating how you run your franchise. This is true, I know, because I've talked to many franchise owners. And I've worked at two different Tim Hortons and I've had to talk to their managers about this a few times. So... This is awful. This this just causes strain on the little guy. Second, we're, we're going to talk about uh, things like health insurance. That might go. If you have a company that established itself really well and worked its way into the system and goes, okay, we can start paying our employees more. We can start giving them health insurance. You introduce this wrench in the works, this bit of chaos into it. They have to restructure the whole system. They might have to take out health insurance or take it out for, say, a suspended period of time. Uh, until they get everything back in order. So you just fucked over the general public by doing that. And yeah, in Canada, you have a baseline of health insurance, but there are certain things that aren't covered. And in a good corporation or a company, like the one I was working for, I'm laid off right now, they have a good pension plan, they have a good health insurance plan and a dental plan and, and, and plan for your eyes so you can get glasses. That's not covered by Canadian health insurance. It's not covered by the base level. So you do need that. And that's very important. And I, you might not get that if they start paying the minimum, you know, the base level guys even more. Because how many people do you have? Well, let's look at Tim Hortons, right? On day shift, you've got two guys on the uh, on headsets. You've got two guys on front counter. You've got one baker and one sandwich guy. All right, so that's six people in general, plus supervisor, plus the manager. That's day shift. Afternoon shift, a baker. Sandwich station and two to three people. Uh, they don't have to have as many people, but you need two people on headsets, and at least one of those people has to take counter. So anywhere from two to three people. Okay. Night shift. You've got two people that come down to one, and also an afternoon shift. You have one supervisor. Sorry. 
Uh, midnight shift, you don't have a supervisor, but you have two people, two employees. So let's do the math here. You've got six. Yeah, we're gonna we're gonna take out the supervisor. We're gonna, gonna deal with uh, the base level employees here. So six on day shift. We've got two, three, four. About we're gonna say four on uh, you know that on afternoons, and then we'll say two on midnights. You got twelve people. So let's look at their wages. So they're making. 11.50 an hour right now. They gotta go up 250. So let's look at the difference. One employee, eight hour shift, eight times 250. You're looking at $5, $10, $20 per employee. Okay, so that's for eight hours. And they've got 12 employees. So let's do the math here. 120. All right, so we got, I don't know, make sure, double check my math. Oh, one, two, three. Now it's even more than that. Because that's three. Sixty. One, twenty. I'm really high right now. I'm sorry. Yeah, so. God. Make sure. Sixty times two. Yeah, two forty. Okay. Sorry. I'm really fucking stoned right now. Two forty for the lot of them. So that's a two hundred four forty dollar markup. Now, was that for. That was not for the week. Huh. All right, so week that's daily. So that's a daily. Di Let's just do the daily. I'm not gonna do the math for the month and the weekly. But basically, daily you now have to make up two hundred uh, two hundred forty dollars. You have to make two hundred forty dollars more to cover that. So where is that cost gonna come from? Where is that two hundred forty dollars a day gonna come from? Because you still have to pay them those wages and you still have to pay the corporations. So you either have to a Raise your prices, or B, cut somewhere. Cut somewhere. And by the way, Tim Hortons does not, most of them do not pay their cut their employees, even full-timers. Pension, health insurance, nothing is covered in that in those franchises. I've worked at two Tim Hortons. I've had many friends worked at Subway, McDonald's, Burger King. Most of the time, you get nothing unless you request it. You have to request it. And so most of the time, nobody's getting shit, Okay. Where is that 240 going to come from? Well, looks like we're going to have to mark everything up. And like I said, when that happens, and every business guy has to go through it, and yes, the small business owner has to go through this too. Don't forget about them. They all have to go through this markup. Where is that money going to come from? Well, they're going to have to mark up all the prices. And like I said, always goes into a recession. Always, 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 because everybody has to be conservative with their money because cuts are coming from everywhere. So... It's going to hit the hardest in the first uh, the first six months when it starts hitting. Initially, uh, people are going to get paid more, and it's not going to set in because most companies have a good budget and a good balance, and they have money in reserve. So they won't get hit so hard initially, but eventually it's going to catch up to them, and they won't be able to pay their employees. So this means some places might get shut down, some employees just might get kicked, and then others will have to take up the workload, which would really fucking suck. And or they'll just have to raise the prices. So no matter what, this doesn't help. Raising the minimum wage does not fix anything. It is a band-aid solution and almost always causes a recession. Uh, that This is my best way of explaining to you guys. I'm also fucking ripped right now. But this is to explain to the layman how raising the minimum wage does not help people get by. It will actually, in fact, cause even more issues. On small business, big corporations will probably be okay, especially the executives. They don't give a shit. You actually make them look even more evil because they, they don't give a shit about the little guy. They just want their cut, and they're going to get their cut, and they're going to shut you down because you are now a liability. They're gonna they're literally going to take all funding and just go, we're closing down this franchise. You're shut down. And they go, wait, we, we don't want to do that. We want to make money. This is my franchise. This is my business. Well, well, in our contract, it says that if you're not paying us so much, we get to control the franchise, and we get to dictate what happens to it. And what we want to happen to it is for it to be shut down. That's great. Now you've got all those people, the 12, plus the two supervisors and the manager, and then the assistant manager. So you've got, yeah, you got 16 people out of a job. And that's just in one franchise. Uh, let's expand that all over the country. 
This is why raising the minimum wage is a terrible idea. And instead, you should be bringing in better paying jobs. That is the solution because you have to strive to work harder. You have to strive to get a better job. So this is the best way I can explain it. I hope you get it. If you have any questions, leave it in the comment section. It's been Green Valor. You guys have a good day.